and welcome to the sixth episode in our Spark Social Justice online series. Um, we really hope you've enjoyed the episodes so far and that you find them really engaging and informative. Um, today we are delighted to welcome Tom Allen and Anna Marshall to local young people who have done extraordinary things and who have got a real passion for social justice and for making a positive difference and we're just so delighted to have them both on today. Some of you might recognise Tom um, from hosting the previous Spark episode so it's really great to have him on today as a guest so we can hear more about all the brilliant work that he's done. And um, today's episode is titled Belonging and it's centred around how young people feel they belong within the church and the sense of connection that they have to the church. So Anna uh, won the Million Minutes Dorothy Day Award for her work in school and her parish. Anna and her sister Eleanor also won the Pax Christie Peace Award for their work in the Diocese of Hallam. They've organised the Day of Justice and Peace and Social Action Workshops for Hallam Secondary Schools for the past two years and applied for a grant from the Passionists themselves to support that work, which is amazing. Um, and last year, Anna won first prize in the Columbian Journalism Competition on the theme of the environment, which is absolutely fantastic. And the reason as well we were so excited that Anna could join us today is because she'd written an article for the Justice and Peace newsletter based on a workshop she led at a Justice and Peace National Conference all about young people in the church and, and it was really thought provoking. So yeah, I think possibly a future career as a journalist, Anna, could be? Very, very good writer. <laughs> you never know. Um, and so let's move on to Tom then. Again, extraordinary young person. So Tom, within his school, St Mary's Menston, he helped create a social justice group. And the social justice group focused on fair trade and climate change. And he very much drove that group for the last four years. And he's been really interested in attending several events, such as the Expert Centre Schools Conference in November 2017. He is also a recipient of the Barbara Ward Award in 2019 through the Million Minutes Celebrating Young People's Awards. And Tom was also responsible for leading the school to a CAFOD Live Simply Award and Fair Trade School Award. Um, and what, what's just so impressive about that as well is that everything that you've done has been driven by you. There's been no one saying, do this, do that. It's all come from you. That fire has come from you. And that's amazing. Before we start sort of looking into the nitty gritty of the article, um, especially that, that Anna wrote that kind of inspired this episode, I really, really want to hear a little bit about your own personal experiences, um, particularly as young Catholics yourself and the role that the church and that mass you know, holds within your own lives at the moment and how important it is to you? Right. Um, yes. So um, I started off in Hallam going to a local church called St. Hugh's. Um, but this, this, this is kind of where I kind of really got involved with the church. And I, we had a really strong community there. It was a really small church. And it was kind of like everyone knew everyone else there. It was really strong community. Um, but unfortunately, a few years ago, this church got closed down. Um, so since then, I've kind of been hopscotching around churches, trying to find a church that I can really get into social justice with again. Um, so we've tried, we tried another one in Sheffield, but now we've moved over to one called St. Joseph's in Matlock. And we're really trying to build some roots again. It's kind of like restarting. But I feel like because I've got links in social justice, I feel like that's the one thing that's kind of keeping me going to church and wanting to kind of build a community. Um, and for the last few years as well, I've been going to the National Justice and Peace Conference. And that's really been a place of inspiration. And it's just kind of seeing the wider church and what it's doing in the world and that really keeps me focused on social justice it's um the church is really what's inspired me to get active get socially active 
that's that's amazing thank you anna and we're going to talk a little bit later as well aren't we about the sense of the importance of being part of a community within the church and that sense of belonging yeah. so yeah so thank you so much for that great and tom what about you then what's your personal experience been like so quite like anna actually um i had i used to go so I used to go to a church called St. Joseph's in Pudsey and a uh, really good community there. I'd grown up in that church, used to go every week. Um, and I think it's because like, I was encouraged to do quite a lot of stuff. So like, there's obviously like children's liturgy and things when you're a lot younger. Um, I did my first Holy Communion there. Um, and there's lots of, like, there's lots of reason to go. But then um, I was kind of driven away because we moved house um and we started going to a different church and it just wasn't the same i didn't have the same bond with it and then i started like seeing my school as my church which is a bit weird but i ended up doing quite a lot of work within school to kind of ensure that i was still keeping up with it and still kind of ensuring that i wasn't missing out so um yeah i can't and it's kind of driven away and I think it's because like I guess I I did I was quite busy with school that I just found it really convenient that I was able to kind of go to school and participate in things that maybe weren't just a mass yeah and feel kind of like good about my faith and feel like I can sort of there's people there I could talk to and people there that I could discuss things with which I couldn't do it the other I couldn't do elsewhere so yeah yeah and what, what I'm getting from both of you is just that how important it is to feel that sense of connection to where you are um and sense of familiarity um Anna I've, I want to just I'd love it if you could talk to us a little bit um because we talked a lot there as well both of you did about the importance of faith but the importance of faith and action which both of you have have just really shown in regards to all the, all of your experience so far so you were asked to lead a workshop at the justice and peace national conference and specifically a workshop for young people looking at the theme of young people and the sense of belonging to the church could you tell us a little bit about that, how you find the experience? Okay, um, well, it was, um, we had a, we started off in um, groups for discussion. We had, we split the room into, no, four groups. And we had a young person facilitating each group of adults. And um, we were kind of just reflecting on their experience of, of church. And we were kind of comparing how we see church and how we saw church at how they saw church when they were growing up and it was really interesting to kind of see the reasons that people went to church um, and they were kind of saying they had a sense of duty to go to church and how young people now don't really get brought up with that sense of duty to go to church it's more like something you do until you get a certain age and then you kind of drift away or it doesn't become that important anymore um, so it was really it was really interesting to kind of see that change in how we view church um, there was there was a lot of discussion that really gave young people a chance to say how they see church um, and kind of we really got into what is church and what does it actually mean to us and the thing that young people really seem to want was that community everyone's got that yearning for community and what was really interesting was the fact that all the adults were saying virtually the same thing that the young people were saying we all want the same things from church um, it was it was also interesting when some of the adults suggested having um, youth masses and saying will this encourage young people and all the young people said no we want to be integrated in the church we want to be you know fully part of the church we don't want to be separate. So that was really, really interesting um, and really thought provoking what that kind of the adults and the young people all wanted the same thing. Um, but it was really good that they were listening to us and really wanting us. Hmm. I think it's kind of important that um, young people are integrated as much as possible. And I think they should be given 
as much of a voice as any adult should be. Uh, I feel like obviously you have to respect the experiences that adults have and often they kind of understand certain matters a lot more because they've had more time to kind of get to grips with certain ideas. But I think young people can offer such a new perspective and I think it is really important that their voices are heard and they have that opportunity. Yeah, I think it's a really important thing to do. To move on to another point now, and this is this is something that struck me particularly in the article that you wrote, Anna, um, in which a young person in one of uh, your workshops um, felt that the church could be quite hostile, um, and that led me to think about you know how I'd love to hear. I think I'm going to come to Tom first in a second, just to your thoughts about that Tom in terms of the church being hostile what do you think about that and also it, what does the church need to do to be more of a home uh, a place of welcome what, what needs to change if people do feel that it is a hostile place but yeah, what are your thoughts about that? Um, so I think young people see themselves as outsiders in the church because I don't they don't I feel like they don't feel like they have a place there and I feel like they don't have a sense of place at the church um because I I think of the best example to use here is for example like young children are able to go to liturgy and have lots of involvement um sort of that kind of older teenage younger teenagers get to do like work their way through the sacraments and things right. um yeah. but then adults and especially like older people get yeah. to you know be involved in the music or the readings and stuff but young people aren't really encouraged to do that and young people I think young people see them kind of get a bit not frightened or scared but kind of nervous when they like they don't really feel like they can talk to a priest or something like that maybe obviously it's very dependent on who the person is and if they've been brought up with you know in the church but especially if you've like moved or something or you're not used to the environment in which you're in you feel quite outsider and quite like you, like maybe like you're unable to have a voice so I think it's I think it's very difficult but I think the best way to kind of make a young person feel involved is really just to kind of get them involved with stuff and make them feel welcome and encourage them to do stuff and make the time to talk to them and make the time to kind of um show that you're listening and show that you care about what what they think and their opinions and stuff yeah that's interesting what you say about the younger age group kind of have got a yeah. lot don't they in church to keep them focused and activities etc that are going on that link school to church but it's when you reach that age of like 16 maybe you know upwards where you start to become much more independent and you might start to go to church on your own and not always with your family maybe or maybe you change times that that's where that can become a little bit more difficult and challenging that's really interesting that point Tom I hadn't thought about that before Anna and um, what are your thoughts about that um, I kind of see it as um, when you go to church you kind of have an expectation to have a perfect faith and kind of everyone expects you to be like fully rounded in your faith and everything's there already where and I think this is a bit unrealistic I think the point of church is to grow and often people can kind of forget that I know at the workshop that we did um lots of young people were kind of saying how um they can question everything now they can ask questions they can they can challenge things they can you know really get into full discussions but at church they feel like there's a barrier there's so many rules you can't go past that you can't ask questions um, and it's it can be a little bit intimidating um which was which was it was sad really because when i think about church i think of social justice yeah. and kind of being active and getting your voice out there but hearing from young people that they feel that they can't do that that they don't feel like their voice has a place in the church that that was that was interesting and they were saying how they wanted to feel like they could belong but often the people um often people kind of seem to seem to almost either put them on a pedestal or ignore them and um, so um it's kind of finding a balance 
And I think if there's just one open person in the church, they can make it feel so much more welcome. And if you just, if um, adults kind of treat young people with respect and ask them questions, and then also listen uh, to their questions, I think it could be a lot more open. It's all about kind of dialect and communicating. And I think when that's, when there's, a, when there's a clear communication, I think it gets a lot easier to feel like you have a place in the church. I think it's a part of, um, it's part of having courage to be able to talk to people. And you've got to kind of always remember that people are the most important thing in the church. And often it can seem like the mass is the most important thing, but I think the community is so important. You can't, it's, it feels like, um, some people feel like when you go to mass, you're on your own. It's something you do on your own. Um, this is why I really love the idea of the church as the body of Christ. I love the idea that we're all together. Um, and I think it kind of, yeah, really, really knits it all together. And it's, the community is absolutely why I go to church. I mean, at the moment with Corona and not being able to go to church, um, I, I still meet up regularly every weekend with um, with kind of like some people that used to go to St. Hugh's, my first church, and um, we do a prayer service, we sing hymns, and I feel like this is really the core of the church. Mm -hmm. um, so I think as long as people just remember how important people are in the church, mm -hmm. then it's it's so much better and you kind of all work together for the same goals. That's really interesting. Tom, what about you? How do you feel about all that? Um, well, I think, yeah, I, agree. I, I completely agree. Like, I think church is like a, a community and I think that's the most important thing. And I think, um, I, I mean, the way that I see church is that it's quite generational in that, like, my grandparents went to the same church, therefore then my mum went to that church. And then like moving and changing that community it really you kind of feel really out of place but um like I think pe again as people move away they don't really want to replace the community they already have they don't want to replace that kind of um that that kind of the thing that they've grown up with so they kind of, I feel like that's why people deter from kind of starting and like joining a new community but also I think people used to see the like especially like quite a long time ago people used to see the church as a way to communicate with others but mm. with like social media and like obviously phones mm. like that's it's become less and less about that so mm. it's kind of we're in this kind of period now where church is like trying to find this new like a, not a new meaning to it but like a new kind of reason a new kind of reasoning to it like kind of like it's not just about seeing your friends anymore it's not just about a, like a way to be together it's now like oh we need to find like a new purpose for it I guess you know when we go to church what what do you think is important in terms of helping what you hear and see to resonate with young people's lives and and how could that how could that take place and how could that happen do you think um well Firstly, I'd like to say I think young people can think deeply um, and I think the Gospels themselves are incredibly inspirational for all people. Um, I think young people do want spiritual depth um, and I think young people often feel like they want to be more committed than many other people you might see around the church because I feel like they want to be involved with the social justice um, and I feel like that can often be a cause of frustration um but what 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 young people what we all need is um the courage to be able to um to inspire courage in other people by going out there um having a voice really being really putting our voice out there um, and we get we can get that courage from the gospels and the inspiration of the gospels um, and i think sometimes this kind of aspect of church it seems hidden the social justice as aspect yeah. and kind of getting out there yeah. and doing things yeah um but i think young young people all people can find it in the gospel 
and I think it's really important to have the courage to go out and to start um, just make a start and do what you can. Do you think about that Tom as well in terms of social justice and Catholic social teaching and do you feel that it sits at the moment quite separately from someone's from an experience of going to mass? What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think I, I completely agree actually. Like I think it's 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 hidden. It's mm -hmm. definitely hidden. Like it's I found it through school, but I wouldn't have known about that if I hadn't have gone to a Catholic school. Like I don't think right. I would have had the same resonance with that. Um and like I don't think I would have I don't think I would have had the same journey that I would have had if I hadn't have learned about that through school and been fortunate about enough to have learned that through school. Um, and I think it was really interesting about like the Gospels. I think they can be interpreted so many different ways, but I think young people just need to learn to interpret it to their lives and it, like learn to ask and learn to like ask questions and ask kind of ha like a priest to maybe explain how that could be like referred to their life and how that could be um interpreted yeah, yeah. I think they all have importance but we just need to learn to be able to um, kind of adapt it to our circumstances i yeah. think perhaps this could be kind of like the church's the church's role for young people that could be the time of reflection where they can really they can talk about it and things like this um and i think this also comes with the church being open um so yeah i really really agree with that following on from that there's just a couple more points that I'd, I'd really like to talk to you about and and we've spoken about community and the importance of feeling connected so in terms of how the church currently communicates with young people uh and, and also about social media do you feel that the church needs to communicate with young people more through social media or do you feel that it could be done in other ways yeah, I think like um, that the church community feels like, but I, I think it's like both people to blame in like how that the, the church shouldn't be forced to use social media. I don't think they should be forced to use it, but I think it would be great if they started to use it because like as, so you know, social media is a, massive thing in our generation right now and that's just going to continue like like our generation the next generation the next generation so if the church can start reaching the, to those people now then the community is going to continue but i think people in the church now see it the opposite way around that they feel like they're going to lose community by having things like this so i think it's like to the part of the young people though i don't think that they it's not that they don't try i think it's that i i think that young people find it very difficult to like to kind of build a community in the church so it's kind of both parties are to blame for it so like young people i guess are not to blame but young people feel as if that they can't start a community in the church but then the church don't feel like they can communicate to young people so i guess it's kind of up to both both sides of kind of risking the fact that young people won't be there to continue in a way i guess i think that if the church is seen actively in the community its mm. presence will communicate to young people um I don't think social media is a bad thing. I don't, I don't really use it as much as I know lots of my friends do. Um, but I, I know it, it can be a tool, particularly for young people. Um, and it is a way of building that community that young people are familiar with. Um, however, I don't think the church can isolate itself either way, using it or not using it. I think there's more substance than just social media in the church. Um, but I think social media can be used as a tool to strengthen that networking. Um, so I think, I think it should be used, but I don't think it should be used on its own. Social media can be really useful to try and like amplify the great, like the great work that churches are doing. Yeah. And I think it's a great way to kind of 
um, highlight people or people in the community that are doing things that you yeah. wouldn't otherwise know about. I'm just going to finish with a quote that a young person said in one of Anna's workshops. Um, the church should be changing the world. At the moment, the world is changing the church. So, um, Anna, if we come to you first, if that's okay, what are your thoughts about that? Because I know in your article you said you kind of changed your mind about it. So tell us a little bit about how you think, what you think. At first, I didn't quite, I didn't really understand it. I didn't really know what it meant. I kind of thought, um, you know, of course the church should be changing. Um, it should be adapting. It should be suiting, you know, modern life. It should be, you know, moving with the times. But then I thought, um, well, what, what really is the church? And I thought, well, it's rooted in the Gospels. It's, it's this community. And in the Gospels, when you read about it, this community and these kind of ideas are so important and so brilliant and so relevant still today. Um, and I thought these ideas should be what's changing the world. And I don't really feel like the church is, is that anymore. I don't feel like the church always reflects the gospel as fully as it could do. Um, but I think if it did, then the church would be changing the world. Um, and I think it would be going out. And I think by living, by trying to live the gospels, I think we can we can kind of be be that church, be that build that community, and really go and change the world. Relevant right now because like you know COVID nineteen is going on right now, and I think churches have been forced to change how they how how they like mm. conduct a mass. Like I think I've looked at it a different way in mm. that like the world is evolving and the church is catching up and like i think for example like masses are being conducted on la online now on yeah. lives online that wouldn't be happening if covid 19 didn't happen like lots of young people are making changes in the world but lots mm -hmm. of young people are starting to make changes within their own communities not the church communities mm -hmm. um but I believe young people, if young people were involved with the church more, like those like-minded people would collaborate to make change. You've both, I mean, you've both given so much food for thought, um, but I just want to thank you both so much for coming on today and, you know, expressing your views, talking about your own experiences and how you, what I'm getting as well from the conversation is just how vital the church actually is and in terms of the role that it can play in inspiring young people and there's so much hope there from what I'm hearing as well from you you know there there is there's light and there's hope um but the the core of it is on that sense of community and communication and um taking the first step and that idea of, of the church being a home and how the gospels and social teaching can inspire young people with their faith and that that awareness needs to needs to grow um that's kind of a summary of, of of my thoughts from this really fascinating episode is there anything that you both would like to say as like a closing closing thought idea comment um I think that um, I think that's what's really important is that we just have the courage to make that first step, and that first step might just be talking to someone in the parish or talking to someone you've never spoken to before, perhaps someone who's older, perhaps someone who you, you think I never would have spoken to them. I don't know how how I can connect to them, because when you start talking to people, you realise that this the their different experiences are so incredible you can learn so much from them and you can really start to build a community which is so important and if you're not willing to take the first step then why should they be willing to try and take the step you know you've got to put yourself out there and it's hard and it can be scary 
but I think getting your voice out there is really important and if the first step is just talking to someone in church then by all means go out and do it <laughs> brilliant great advice thank you Anna Tom anything from you that you want to finish with yeah I couldn't agree with more with that just talk to people and kind of don't expect other people to talk to you like it, for example if you don't understand something talk to people talk to the priest like I think that's so important and I think it's it's so it is quite daunting at first but like the more that you the more effort you make the the, the better it's going to be and the more enjoyable it'll be in the in the end and actually the more you'll end up getting out of it so yeah and sometimes you have to step a little bit out of your comfort zone don't you yeah. in order to bring about change or make a positive difference. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode today. If you're really interested in setting up your own social justice action group, please do check out our episode with Tom Chibo from Lead Citizens, where he gives really practical advice about how you can do that and the steps that you can take. If you've got any questions about this episode or any questions about the project, get in touch, send us a message on Facebook or comment or Twitter and let us know and we'll get back to you straight away. Um, but for now, thank you so much for watching. We really hope that you've enjoyed this and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks Tom, thanks Anna. Bye everybody.